If you are one of our longtime viewers, you probably know what DARPA stands for and what they are researching on. But if you don't, DARPA is the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, it's one of the most secretive arms of the military, and they are engaged in plenty of research, many types of the research, many to advance the military power, and many also to have applications that are non-violent and they don't have anything to do with war. And one of them is to install chips in the head of military members. This is pretty controversial, but the reality is that one of the concerns no. is the fact that there's a lot of traumatic brain injury, and a lot of people come back with PTSD, and they're trying to create these chips that when installed, they record the version of the, of the brain before the war. So they can actually see how the brain needs to come back to after the war and the trauma that they experience. Also, to monitor the chemical changes in the brain that are associated with depression, with mood swings. So this research is very powerful. I think we have to focus on the fact that it's being developed in order to help people when they come back adjust and deal with post-traumatic stress disorder. Now, we have journalist Anne Jacobson. She's coming out with a book, Chronicle this, the History of DARPA. It's called The Pentagon's Brain. And she says she that yes, this. yes, there is need for that. But at the same time, don't forget that DARPA is part of the military. And at the end, they want to weaponize. She's afraid that they are trying to do two things. One, create super soldiers that have no remorse, that they can actually Manchurian tap. Manchurian candidate in, style exactly, is what this exactly. reminds me of. Exactly, exactly. And the other one is tapping into the brain, recording how the brain works, so they can actually develop artificial in intelligence from that data. It's pretty crazy. It is crazy, and it's sad at the same time, because we have 2.5 million Americans who've served in Iraq and Afghanistan coming home. 300,000 have traumatic brain injury, so you would hope that something would help them, but at the same time, this is very Manchurian candidate. It's, yeah. it, you can see the sinister aspect of something being implanted in your brain. I mean, what's next? Does it control you? Um, do we get to that place where yeah. your thoughts are not your own anymore? I mean, that's a little too... That's exactly, you know, that's exactly Anis Jacobson uh, reservations. The fact that the type of research, when you see at the research, you might say, yeah, that sounds a little conspiracy theory. Mm -hmm. But if you put two and two together and you start, like we reported before, the, te the advancement in technology in, Nanote you know, nanotechnology, the fact that we are now teaching the brain how to regrow nerves mm -hmm. with guides, like you reported. I think it's very important to start to connect the dots and see the possibility is there. I think I'm more afraid about the fact that they're going to implant sensors in your brain that can actually record your brain activity and reuse it to model artificial intelligence, to control drones. They also are thinking, she claims that there is a possibility of controlling your thoughts, mm -hmm. or even communicate only by thought in, to be, in between. And DARPA actually has research that has these applications. They have two main ones. One is called RAM, Restoring Active Memory. And this is one to help soldiers when they come back. You know, you restore better memories than the ones that they developed during the war. So when they come back home, they can get, you know, integrated faster. And then the other one is Remind. Restorative Encoding Memory Integrational Neural Device, and it's a, it's a chip that actually is going to monitor your brain. It's going to tell you the moment that you're starting getting depressed, there's going to be chemical changes, and they're going to send a signal. What if we put a modem on the chip, and now they communicate to the motherboard? <laughs> you know, we're going to help you. We're going to give you some relief, especially if, you, if you've had trauma. But we might take a little bit of your autonomy. We're not probably not going to tell you that last part. That scares me. Just say no. Anybody listening to this, you know, hopefully, do people have a choice whether they receive the chip or not? Do we know? Well, here's the thing. According to Defense One, an online magazine that covers the military, and it's the only place where I actually found an official statement on the matter, it was from last year, where DARPA was announcing this, this project, and everything was framed around PTSD. Now, they said at the time that they were still in development and the testing phase wouldn't be happening till five years, so maybe in the three upcoming years. Now, we know that not, they're not necessarily saying the truth. Mm -hmm. You know, they could have a completely different internal timeline and have another one for the public, so that doesn't really mean much. But they do accept the fact that they're doing this type of research on top of the exoskeletons, on top of the fighting robots, and a bunch of other research that makes me have, you know, Doubts because Serious in one side reservations because I I'm, I love technological advancement I love when when we are pushing the limits of science but I'm very very wary I'm very you know preoccupied with the idea of weaponizing all of this advancement. Me too. At the end of it, we can't forget that DARPA is funded by the military. But we want to know your thoughts and. 
please, if you haven't subscribed to the Lib TV.